What up, though, y'all? It's your boy, Bill. For those of you who've been around for a while, you probably know I've done this video before. May have been the first one I ever recorded. This is my most viewed video, the most disturbing also, but I wasn't able to monetize it because I didn't really understand the rules to this platform, and I was using a lot of profanity and stuff, and just a lot of stuff that I wanted to cut out of it, so I just decided to do it again. It's gonna be a much clean version now, and I'm gonna delete the old one. <laughs> A lot of people ask the question, do people really get violated in prison? Get their manhood taken away in prison? The answer to that is yes. It's not as often as it was back in the day, but the real answer is yes. Like I did nine years in there and I have probably been at a prison and heard about it maybe four or five times. But the fact remains the same that it does still happen. Now, when I say I witnessed it, I did not witness it with my own two eyes, but I did witness it with my two ears. The way the rooms are set up, they're super close together, right? Inside every room, like going along the wall at the bottom, it's a vent, it's a long vent, probably like that high. And you can talk to your next door neighbors through the vent, they can hear you real good. So if I'm just laying in my room being quiet and my roommate, the people in the room next to me in there laughing and talking about something, I can hear them through the vent. Sometimes like if we lock down and we want to chop it up with each other, we could just talk. Like I could be laying in my bed and be like, say, bro, what's up? And then he could be like, what's up, bro? What you got going on? And we can hear each other through the vent. And it'll sound a little distant, like it might have a little echo to it, but if I get out my bed and come up close to the vent and be like, hey, bro, and he get out his bed and come up close to the vent, it'll sound crystal clear. It'll be so loud, like, like we right here standing in each other's face. Now, they got something in the prison called the F games. The F stands for the F word. I'm just not going to say it. Games. What it is, allegedly heterosexual people that plays games as if they're homosexual. And it's just like a joke. It's just like, ah, ha, 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 laughing, joking, whatever. Like, I think the first time I ever, ever, I probably was in prison just a couple months. The first time I ever heard somebody play the F games. And there was two dudes that used to be together. They was cool with each other. And one of the dudes got up. I think we was getting ready to go out for child. He was pulling his pants up. His homeboy walked past him and said, boy, that getting fat. And then they both bust out laughing. I was like, ah, man, watch out, bro, watch out. And everybody that was around them started laughing. I never felt like that type of stuff was funny. So that's the game that they play in there. Uh, when I was in there, somebody attempted to play a game with me like that. Probably my, I probably was on my second year in. It was one of my homeboys I was cool with. He had been locked up a little longer than me. You know, so he was he was into the plan. And he just was a, a, a the type of person that wanted to be around and play and joke a lot and you know, I like the joke and stuff too, but not about certain stuff. I was talking to him about, I think I, we was just talking that morning. And I said something. I had some toothpaste or something on my shirt. And then I was telling him I was brushing my teeth this morning. I messed around, swallowed the swallowed some toothpaste. Then I went trying to, to mess around and spit some of it out. It got on my shirt or whatever. And once I said the word swallow, he looked at me and was like, well, you did what? And then I just let them know right then and there. I'm like, hey, listen, bro, you know, I rock with you. We cool, but I don't play the F games, bro. I don't play games like that with people. I don't want nobody playing with me like that. Uh, you know, that's, that's that's just not something that I, uh, I, I want to play about. And I would appreciate it if you don't ever play with me like that again. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, you know, bro, I respect it. I ain't, you know, I ain't try you or nothing. I don't even live like that. I just think it's funny. I just play like that. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, that's what you do. That's cool. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you don't play with me no more like that. So he was like, all right, cool. So I nipped stuff like that in the bud off the dribble. Like, I feel like stuff like that, if you feel the way I feel about it, you don't even give it. As soon as the door try to open a little bit, you slam it back. You don't, you let it be known off the dribble. 
I don't play like this. You can play with whoever you want to play with like this, but don't play with me like this. Now, there's a saying that says, there's some truth behind every joke. I'm not going, to I think it's some truth to that saying, but I don't feel like it's 100%. Because I make jokes all the time and I don't be serious about stuff. But I, like I said, I do think there's some type of, you know, is, is some degree of that statement that's true. And just thinking about that and, you know, you're around people that you don't know. You just met these people in prison. You know, you don't know what these people in here for. I just feel like we shouldn't be playing no games like that. So I nipped that in the bud off the dribble. Now there's these two dudes. It's a little dude and a big dude. The little dude is probably, bro, give or take five, 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 six. A little skinny, little short, light brown skin dude. His roommate, darker dude, I'm 5'11". Dude had to be, I know for a fact he had me by at least two or three inches. We just gonna give him six, two, maybe six, three, but to be safe, we gonna give him six, two. Now this dude buff. Big workout all day, push up, pull ups. I'm talking about muscles like this. Big old dude, tatted up everywhere, tatted all on the face and everything. Now these two dudes, the little dude and the big dude, argues with each other all day long. I'm talking about they just argue with each other over and over and over. And it's not like arguments where it's just amongst them and don't nobody know. It be big arguments, bro. Like the whole dorm be hearing about it. Like they. They be going crazy with it. Like, they get mad and be calling each other out their names, calling them the B word. Like, they be saying all kind of crazy stuff to each other. So, one day, these dudes so called they self get to fight. So, they arguing. Little dude, the little dude, the one running the room, talking about hit, then hit. So, big dude running there behind him. You know, people run over there to the door watching. They in there, they get to the scrapping. These people was in the room right next door to me. They used to argue and so-called they self get to fighting all the time. So the little dude finally came, bust out the room. He had a little blood on his face. His lip was fat just a little bit. He was looking back to the room. He was sweating everywhere. And he said, yeah, just beat your butt. And the bigger dude came walking out the room, smiling. He was sweating too. I think he had a little scratch right here. And he said, I let you do that. I let you do that with your little sex ass. I let you do that. And... When he said that, everybody in the dorm bust out laughing, but they thought it was so funny. And then the little dude was like, nah, you gay. You know, but he play like that too, bro. I done witnessed him with my own two eyes play the F games all the time with his roommate. So I'm going to give it a couple of days went by after they got to fighting. I'm standing outside my door because the inspection team had just left. I was just still standing out there. I was rolling up a Chris Brown CD. I had just started. This was around the time I had kind of kind of just started smoking Chris Brown CDs on and off because I smoke them, put them down, smoke them, put them down. So the door next to me, the door with these two dudes as roommates, it's a piece of tissue. The door is closed and it's a piece of tissue hanging out the door. The tissue represents I'm doing something. I need my privacy. Do not enter. That's what tissue hanging out the door means. I'm standing outside my door rolling up the Chris Brown CD. I had just had a wick. A wick is, you know, the tissue with the fire on it. That's how we use the light. The door popped. People started coming in that was outside the dorm that was going to like movement, class, the chaplain office, wherever they was going to is people coming back in from there. So the big dude comes in. He walks over there. And when I'm putting the lighter up like this to light the Chris Brown CD, I hear him say, hey, C. Bill. Now, I didn't know what he wanted because I don't even talk to him, bro. I promise you. I don't talk to dude, period. Because he plays the F games with Damn near everybody he talked to, it seems like. And he's super big, work out. You know, he be acting like a bully, but not like a bully in a serious sense. Just like playing with people. Like, he'd just be playing. But I just feel like you already big as hell. And you play the F games. And you be acting like you some type of beast. We're just not going to get cool. I'm going to stay away from you far as possible. So, you know, I'd never be placed in a situation where I feel like I got to do something to you. So I was super confused when he called my name. I had no idea what he wanted. I looked up at him. I'm like, what's up, bro? He said, how long my roommate had the tissue in the door? What? You think I'm sitting here watching your roommate paying attention to how long he got damn tissue in the door? I don't know. So I told him, like, bro, I don't know. I ain't watching, paying attention to nobody how long they got the tissue in the door. So he walks up to the door. He knocks on the door. Doo, doo, doo. Little dude in the room said, yeah. Big dude outside the room said, bro, you using the bathroom, bro? 
Like he had an attitude because sometimes when people come from out the door, they just ready to go in their room and relax or whatever. So when you come in and your roommate got tissue and though you know you can't go in there right now, it, it'll have you frustrated sometimes. So he like, bro, you using the bathroom, bro? So the little dude said, yeah, I'm using the bathroom. So the big dude was walking away. Then he turned around and screamed over his show. He said, nah, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. You in there beating your little meat. I know what you're doing. It's all right, though. I'm going to beat it for you later on. And then he bust out laughing. The little dude in the room bust out laughing. You could hear him laughing out loud. Everybody else that heard it bust out laughing. They're like, man, bro, crazy. <laughs> like it's a big joke or something. I didn't find it funny at all. So a couple of days later, it was a big stabbing that popped off at the prison in another dorm. It didn't happen in our dorm, but it was a big gang issue. It was between two gangs. Now, whenever there's a big stabbing in the prison, every dorm go on lockdown. Sometimes, like if they got honor dorms or faith-based dorms, I ain't told y'all about that yet, but I'm gonna get into that. But like, if they got the real, real good dorms where they ain't got nobody yet that they feel like is a threat, they may not lock them down. But everybody, whenever a big gang incident happens in whatever dorm, the whole prison go on lockdown because they got different gangs in every building. So the same gang that just stabbed it out with each other in a different building, you know, you got some people in my dorm, that dorm, that dorm, that's a part of that same gang. And they might feel some type of way that their brother got stabbed up by these people. So the people that's affiliated with that in their dorm, they might just go do that same thing to them. So to keep it from spreading, the prison will lock everybody down as soon as something real big pops off. So I probably say we've been locked down now. Usually by us it not being in the dorm we happened in, we'll probably be on lockdown about a week. But for the dorm it happened in, oh yeah, they're going to be locked down for a little minute, way longer than a week. So throughout the course of us being locked up, the little dude and the big dude in the room, all they doing is playing, wrestling. All day, you hear wrestling, you hear screaming, you hear laughing, you hear them hitting the locker boxes. They just wrestling and playing all day. That's all they do. I say probably about three or four days into the lockdown, you hear wrestling and stuff one day. And then you hear the little dude saying, we hear him through the vent saying, man, bro, I don't give a about no size, bro. I don't get no how much bigger than me you is. I beat the choke. And you know this, bro. Get your mup hand on my face, bro. I'm going to fall off in your sh Now, you know when somebody says I'm going to fall off in your they just saying like I'm going to swing on you. Little dude like, bro, this is my last time I'm going to tell you, bro. Get your mup hand on my face. I'm going to fall off in your sh so you got certain people, because we got back windows too, like a long little thing you can slide, a little metal slab you can slide. So people that hear them through the back window, you got people instigating, laughing, saying whatever they saying out on the back window. My roommate said to me, he was like, be them folk crazy hell. And I was like, man, I ain't studying them. They do that all day, 24-7. Next thing you know, they go to fighting for real. Again, I didn't witness it with my own two eyes, but I did witness it with my ears. I knew it wasn't no joke now. Now you hear shoes scuffling. You hear smacking sounds like somebody getting punched you hear like rumbling all around the room and you know in the course of them fighting you hear like when somebody hitting somebody like like you hear people you know both of them saying little crazy stuff to each other i say that went on bro for probably a good 20 seconds and then little dude go to saying all right bro all right all right that's enough bro i'm straight i'm straight but you still here he like, bro, quit hitting me, bro. I'm straight. I'm straight, bro. Quit hitting me, bro. I'm straight. I'm done. I'm good. So you got a couple people on the back one like, he said he's straight, bro. He said he's straight. Quit hitting him. He said he's straight. Now, here's the thing. You got a lot of people that say size doesn't matter in the fight, and it's all about skill because, oh, I'm a little dude, and I done beat out of some big dudes. Okay, yeah, okay. That That's true to a degree. But if you're 5'5", five, five, approximately 130, and wait. And you're the most skilled fighter in the world. And we're in this little small ass room. And I'm 6'2", 6 6 Every bit about 200, maybe 210 pounds. And we get to fighting. And I catch you one good time in your chin. All of this power coming from me is going to knock you out, bro. It don't matter how skilled you are when I'm way more powerful than you. You can be power, you can be skilled and a little dude and got all the skills in the world and you trying to do what you do. And I can be super strong and bigger than you, and I might not can't fight. I can just do the windmill. Well, I'm drop my head, 
go to screaming and swinging, but these hits are so powerful, I might knock you out, bro. So I feel like that's why in a professional fight, boxing, UFC, you don't see nobody 5'5", five, five, 130, fighting nobody 2'10", 6'3". You don't see that because that stuff does matter, bro. Next thing you know, you hit a smaller dude. Well, I just heard the noise. I really couldn't identify which one of them it was, but based off the smaller dude was just saying, stop hitting me, stop hitting me. I already knew it was him. The 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 punching sound stopped. You stopped hearing that. Then you heard like a slight little wrestle movement, like some scuffling. And then you heard, <coughs> and while you was hearing that, you was hearing like a smacking type of sound. So based off of the <coughs> noise, I already knew the big dude had the little dude in the yoke probably choking him out. And the smacking sounds we was hearing, because when you get choked out and they start reaching the point where you can't breathe, it's like a natural reaction for us to do like that, hit the person's arm, because the tap basically means, hey, bro, I really can't breathe, let me go. I knew that's what that noise was, even though I wasn't seeing it with my own two eyes. So it's a couple people down that's in the other room, you know, they go to screaming stuff out the back window like, what's up, bro, what's up? What y'all got going on, man? Y'all tripping, bro. Y'all folk get to hitting, y'all fight, y'all shoot the one that's hit, bro. Sound like somebody getting choked out over there. The noise stopped. That little uh, noise, it all stopped. And then you could hear like, bro, you could tell when somebody get dropped, bro. Like you heard a, like a smack sound, one sound on the ground. And I know that was the big dude dropping the little dude, letting them go. A couple seconds go by. You got people still screaming on the back window trying to see what's going on. And then you hear the little dude say, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. Just rethinking this, reliving this whole thing. It really bothers me, bro, just to go back into this. But I wanted to be able to monetize it. And it's, it's a lot of things. They, they wasn't letting, you know, certain viewers view it. They was putting a lot of restrictions on it because the profanity I was using. So I wanted to do it again, but it do kind of bother me even you know, going back into that. But you hear the little dude saying, bro, what you got going on, bro? You tripping, bro. Bro, you tripping. What you got going on, bro? You tripping. Instantly, I felt like it was a candy bar involved. I felt like the bigger dude had pulled out a candy bar. And the thing that's crazy, because when I was thinking about it, you are already way bigger and way stronger than this man. You can already damn near beat him to death with your hands. So if you pull out a candy bar, bro, you might flatline this man for real. Like he might fall and don't never get up because there's so much power behind the candy bar. It's other people that thought the same thing because people went to yelling out the back. One time, man, big bro, I know you ain't pulling no candy bar out on that man. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It ain't even that serious, bro. Y'all folk tripping, man. So you got people saying stuff like that. My roommate said, Bill, you hear that? I said, yeah. He said, man, bro, finna bust him. I said, yeah, that's crazy. He said, man, I ain't standing there, bro. They do that arguing, fighting, acting like they going to do something to each other all day. He rolled over in his bed, went facing the wall like he about to go to sleep. Next thing you know, you hear little dudes say, bro, I ain't with that. I ain't with none of that. I don't know what you got going on, bro. You, for real? Boy, I ain't living like that. Boy, you tripping, boy. What the hell you got going on? I ain't with none of that. When he said that, I knew it was not a candy bar. It was something else going on. My roommate jumped up off his bed ASAP, jumped down. He said, bro, you heard it? I said, yeah. So he went down there to the vent. He said, look, bro. Look, bro, what the hell going on, little bro? When my roommate screamed through the vent. You heard some old wrestling, right? When my roommate asked him what was going on, like you heard some like stuff like that. The little dude responded back to my roommate and said, man, he done strip butt naked, bro. This man done took off all his clothes, bro. He said, trying to pull my pants down. Oh, no. Nah. Bro, what the you got going on, bro? And you know, you just still hearing stuff like that. So when I heard him saying that, I jumped up out my bed and I went and looked out the window. Now on the door, you got a window about that long, like plexiglass you can see through and I don't see nothing. The officer booth is right across from us, but I looked through in the officer booth, ain't no officer in there. But so my roommate jumped up, came running to the door. He like, watch out, bitch. So I moved back over here by my bed. It's a big old gap under the door at Smith State Prison about that big. So my roommate get down on the floor, kind of turn his head sideways and go to screaming, officer, officer. He was trying to get the officer attention. So he finally jumped up and looked. He didn't see the officer. He turned around and went to kicking the door. 
every time you kick the dough, it make a loud ass boom type of noise. So he kicking the dough. Boom, 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 boom. He dropped back down. Officer! Officer! Other people by that point in the dorm, they done caught on to what's going on. Everybody done went to kicking their dough. Boo, 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 boo. A lot of people kicking the dough right now. Now you got some people that'll say, oh, that's a snitch move. They tried to get the police attention. Listen, bro, to all the young people that's confused, I'm about to get right back to the story, but let me just tell y'all this. All the young people that's confused and trying to keep up with this street code and feel like, oh, this is a snitch, that's a snitch. Listen to me, brother. If me and you go participate in something illegal and you get caught and I don't, and you tell on me, yeah, you snitched because you ain't had no business telling on me if you was out here in this, in this field doing whatever it was you was doing. But if you're in a room and somebody that, you know, you ain't even gotta be the best with them in the world. You ain't even gotta be that best cool with them. You know, little dude was all right with me. I ain't rock with him that much, but he was all right. And you hear something like somebody trying to take this man manhood, and you know this dude is 120, 130, and you know this dude is 200, 210, and you kick the dough to get the officer's attention. That's not snitching, bro. And if you still think it is, I'm not going to go back and forth with you about it. Whatever. I don't know what to tell you. So everybody kicking the dough. Everybody probably give it a good 20 kicks, then take a break, then go give it some more kicks and stuff. Bruh, after that, little dude made a... Little dude made a, like a, like a heart-wrenching scream, bruh. I'm talking about he screamed in a way that I feel like no grown man should ever scream, bro. It was damn near like a howl. Like it was a loud scream and it drug on for a long time, bro. So my roommate runs back over there to the vent, uh, to the window. He get off the floor. He run over there to the window and he just screaming, talking crazy to the bigger dude out the window. He telling him like, well, that's on everything. You don't leave that man alone. We come up lockdown. We're going to pull you out. We're going to bust you with the candy bar. We ain't with no like that. We play and kick it. But, bro, we ain't with all that. So everybody else pretty much started doing the same thing. Everybody that's on the back window, they putting it on their set, on their gang. If big dude don't leave little dude alone, they going to bust him when we come off lockdown. Now, it's like this, bro. Little dude ain't had no bad energy with nobody in there, bro. And it's like we was all in the dorm together for so long to the point it damn near almost was like a family, bro, like almost. You know, you had your little squabbles and your little beefs and stuff, but when you be around people for so long, you just kind of get used to them. You know what I'm saying? Now, if little dude was a bad energy, evil, uh, thinking he's so slick type person that ain't nobody care about, nobody probably wouldn't even have been doing all that, bro, but he was an all right dude. So, you know, everybody screaming, talking crazy to big dude, putting it on their mama, they going to bust him with the candy bar, all kind of stuff. That same heart-wrenching howl, scream, whatever you want to call it, that I told you I had heard not too long ago, we heard it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And then it went from those screams to like crying, bro. You could hear a little dude over there crying, but it was in, it like it had a rhythm to it. Like he was crying, but certain times he would cry louder or whatever, like it was like, like if somebody crying, it's like, <laughs> like cries like that. Then you started hearing like, like just a whole bunch of little noises, but you know it ain't fighting noise. It's just like movement. I already know that that noise was little dude trying to grab hold of something trying to snatch on something, trying to move his body, push his body, trying to roll over, flip over, whatever it was. I know that that was that, him trying to get away from this predator. I'm not, I'm, I'm just not going to say their names. They were both probably in their 30s. And, bruh, after, like, all the movement and stuff that I was saying, I just heard, you started, he just started back screaming, bruh, and then crying louder, then screaming. Then crying, then screaming, then crying, then screaming, then crying. It reached the point where the little dude was like, bro, please, bro. Please, just stop. Please, bro, please. Bro, I know for a fact the smaller dude was screaming and crying for every bit of 45 minutes. I know this for a fact, no exaggeration. I know for a fact it was every bit of 45 minutes. So once, we, once the screaming and crying and stuff stopped, 
My roommate asked me, he said, Bill, what time it is? I had a little G-Shock. I looked at it. You know, you got to press the button to make it light up. Said it's 1 o'clock. It was 1 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, we don't hear the screaming and crying noise no more. So now people calling little dude, calling big dude, hitting the vent, hitting the wall. Some people still kicking the door, trying to get the police attention. We don't hear nothing. Big dude ain't been making noise the whole time. So I'm lying up there. My roommate, he's still calling little dude, other people making little noises and stuff. I started getting sleepy, bro. I laid down in my bed, and, you know, I started kind of dozing off a little bit. But I wasn't all the way there. My roommate said, Bill, what time it is? And I look at the watch, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I done dozed off for real. I ain't even know it. 3 o'clock in the morning, bro. The officer usually don't bring the breakfast trays in the morning to like 4, 4.45. But right when I told him it was 3 o'clock, we heard the door pop. The front door out there, the door where the officer at, we heard the door pop like it popped open loud. Me and my roommate both jump up, run over to the door. But the window's so small, only one person really can see out of it at a time. So my roommate ran up to the door. He looking at the window. I ran, jumped on top of the toilet, held the top of the door at the top and pulled my body over a little bit. My feet still on the toilet. So now we can look out and see outside the room. So we seen the officer right there. All right, it's two sides of the door, it's a booth. You got this door, that's to let you outside. You'll actually step on the sidewalk. You got this middle area, and then you got this door. This is to actually let you in the dorm to where we at. She was in this middle area. We believe she was getting ready to go back out the door. Me and my roommate both started screaming, officer! Officer! My roommate turned around and started kicking the door real hard. Boo, 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 boo. Other people that was still up or that was just waking up, they started doing the same thing, kicking the door real hard. Boo, 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 boo. They started screaming, Officer! Officer! She turned around and looked. She came in the dorm. She like, what? So everybody screaming at the same time. Me and my roommate like, come here, come here. But everybody screaming. So she was like, I can't understand all y'all at the same time. So everybody started screaming my room number. You know, the people that's up there, they getting it mixed up. But if she get over here, that's cool, too. So everybody go to scream my room number. So she look over to my room. So me and my bunk mate, we go to scream, come here, come here. So the lady came over there to the room. She stood in front of the door. My roommate, he had got on the ground and started screaming. So when he seen her coming, he jumped up. And she came and she was like, what? What's up? What's up? Y'all all right? And my roommate, she came over there. She like, what's up? What's up? And my roommate put his like mouth up close on the door and she moved her ear kind of to the top of the, like to this part of the door. And my roommate said, man, I think little dude in that room right next door to us on this side, I think he just got violated. I think he just got violated in the worst way last night. Man, you need to check on that man. We've been calling his name. He ain't saying nothing. You need to check on that man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Me and my bunk mate, we thought he was dead. We thought dude, violated him and choked him out to death or something. So when he told her that the girl walked over to the room, she walked out of our sight. We couldn't see her no more. She went just from where we could see, we couldn't see her no more. But I guess she walked up to the door, bro. It was quiet as a mouse. Wasn't nobody saying nothing. And all you heard was the girl say, oh my God. And she turned around and snatched the radio off her shirt. And she took off running to the door, screaming into the radio. I couldn't even make out what she was saying. She went running to the door, screaming into the radio. I say about another minute and a half went by. Police ran down there deep. It's probably about eight, nine of them. The lieutenant in the front, he run up to the door. He get to the door. He like, what's up, man? What's going on in here? What y'all got going on? What y'all got going on? So the big dude finally say something. I hear him say, I ain't got shit going on. So the lieutenant was like, where all that blood come from, man? How that blood get on that sheet? Where, where that blood come from on that sheet? What you got going on? So he telling dude, he like, man, step over a little bit. Step over. So I guess big dude not listening. So he like, bro, I ain't finna mother tell you again. Step over, bro. So I guess he's still not listening. So the lieutenant looked back to the officer. He said, hey, go get a camera and get ready to unlock this door. When I tell you to unlock this door, go and unlock it. And he snatched the taser off his belt. He had a taser on his belt. He told her to go get the camera because whenever they use force, they supposed to record it. Supposed to. So he was like, hey, man, I ain't going to tell you. I ain't going to tell you again to step over. And while he was saying that, he stopped, like, in the mid-conversation. He was like, I ain't going to tell you again to step over. And then he stopped. He said, man, what the f He said, man, turn around right now. Get on your knees. Put your hands behind your head, bro. Turn around right now. Get on your knees. Put your hands behind your head. Then he stopped saying that. And I guess he went to looking again. And he said, 
when he was saying, turn around, put your hand behind your head. And he stopped and he said, what the? Man, that man in there tied up. He said, man, get on your knees right now. Put your hand on your head. Turn around, man. Your back need to be facing me right now. So the officer, the girl came back with the camera. He asked her, he said, is it on? She said, yeah. She stood in front of him like this, like holding the camera, recording him. He was standing in front of her. He said, hello, my name is Lieutenant such and such. I'm at such and such prison. It's such and such time. I'm about to have to use excessive force on an inmate that just did something else. We believe he violated another inmate. Uh, he didn't say the word violated. He said the R word. And he said um, he's refusing to come, you know, comply. So I'm about to tell him one more time on camera before I use force. So the girl turned the camera to the door. The lieutenant unlocked the little flap. He lifted the flap up. He said, hey, man, come over here. Put your hands in the flap so I can handcuff you. Then get down on your knees. Big dude screamed, Q. So the lieutenant looked back at the camera. He said, okay, I got him on camera refusing. He said, now I'm about to use force. He held up the taser so they could see. One of the officers unlocked the door. She snatched the door open. Uh, you heard was zzz, like the little noise. It's like a louder noise than that. It's like a damn near almost a firecracker type of noise, but you can hear the little electric in it too. And then you heard the big dude scream, ah! And then you just heard his body smack against the concrete. So all the officers ran in the room. You know, they handcuffed the big dude. You seen two of the officers walking the big dude out, bro. He came out the room butt naked, not on a pair of socks, not on nothing. And it just made me wonder, like, damn, bro. Now, you know what I'm saying? It's damn near four. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was you doing in there all night? Still naked, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you got two officers taking him out to the door. And then you hear the lieutenant. We can't see him no more, but we hear him loud and clear through the vent. The lieutenant said, give me some scissors. I need a pair of scissors. So I guess one of the officers gave him some scissors. And then he started saying, what's up? What's up, uh, inmate? He started calling the little dude real name. He like, you all right? You all right, bro? Are you all right? Are you okay? What happened? What happened? Are you okay? I heard one of the girls say, throw some water on him. So I'm assuming he was unconscious or something. You hear the sink run in their room real quick. And then, you know, I guess they threw the water on him. And then you hear the lieutenant kept saying again, what happened, man? What happened? You got to talk to me. You got to tell me something. You got to talk to me so I can help you. I need to know how to help you. And you heard a little dude say, bro, he wasn't trying to talk loud, but through the vent, we were so close. Like I said, you could hear loud and clear, bro. He said, man, he, me. He said he was too big, bro. I couldn't fight him off. He kept hitting me. He knocked me out. He, me. So I heard the lieutenant say, come on, walk with me. Come on, bro. You got to walk with me. Come on. <sighs> bro, when uh, when they when they came out, walking out the room, the little dude wasn't looking up or nothing. He had his head down. He had his eyes closed. Every step he took, you heard him saying, he was walking real slow. Every step he took, you heard him saying, uh, uh, like he was groaning, like he was in pain with every step, bro. From... He had like, they had a, uh, I guess they had just threw a, a fresher type of sheet. They pulled it off one of the beds and they tried to wrap them up a little bit, but it was still up high in the back. You know what I'm saying? They ain't want him to come out because he was naked too, bro. It's sad, bro. It was still up high in the back. And bro, I say like, like from his back end, bro, going down to his leg, it looked like a red paste. It clearly was blood that had dried up, bro. And it was on the man's leg, going down his leg, bro. It was so sad. You know, people went to screaming stuff out the window, telling little bro, keep his head up. We're going to whack big, big dude when we see him again. He wasn't saying nothing, bro. He was just walking like, uh, uh, uh. And, um, you know, the lieutenant took him out. Then the officers, the remaining officers, they put on gloves and they went in the room and started bringing stuff out. Everything they brought out, sheet, pillowcase, blanket, everything had blood on it. And I seen them bring the braided sheets out. Now, the braided sheets is like a sheet. I cut three long strips off the sheet, braid it. You know you got to have it on your feet. So every time you put another braid, you pull it to make it tight. And that's what people use to tie people up in prison, bro. Everything had blood on it, bro. I just want to tell this to everybody, bro. It don't matter who you is. It don't matter what gang you affiliated with. It don't matter how big of a beast, how big of a gangster you think you is. It can happen to anybody, bro. If you get placed in a situation where uh, 
this guy has an advantage on you. He's a lot stronger than you. He's a lot bigger than you. Or, or even if he can knock you out unconscious and put them braided sheets on you and tie you up, bro, they damn near work like handcuffs. I ain't never seen nobody come up out of it in nine years. I have never seen nobody get tied up with that braided sheet and come up out of it, bro. That works damn near like handcuffs. This is why I stress to y'all, bro, stay out the streets. Make better decisions on a daily basis. Don't get yourself placed in a situation. Don't have a mindset to say, oh, I'm going to just go do my time and come back out. How do you know you're going to come back out? Or how do you know you're going to come back out the same? What if you go in there with six months and get your manhood took and I mess you up mentally for the rest of your life? We got to make better decisions, bro. I did an update to this video a while back. I'm going to put the link to the update in this new video. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone. Thank you.